Our next speaker, Catherine, who is ready to go. Here we go. Catherine Reid is a medical student here at Imperial College London. Her talk is not affiliated with, endorsed by, or in any other way officially connected with her own beliefs. <laughs> Put your hands together for Catherine! problems of our age is climate change, which is strange given we managed to go the best part of 200,000 years without destroying the environment, but it turns out fossil fuels are just a bit moorish. Once you start, you don't seem to be able to stop. But there are a few simple steps we can take to protect our environment. Um, obviously one of those from Pietro was uh, the destruction of Canada. Um, <laughs> alternatively, we could look at recycling. <laughs> or, if not recycling, then possibly taking public transport. Um, or, maybe not, but at the very least, you'd think that we could avoid expending extra time and energy just to add packaging to something that already comes <laughs> in its own naturally protective cover. <laughs> Honestly, it's just becoming counterproductive to waste our time hoping for humans to become responsible and I think I've hit on a solution that's at least as feasible as getting everyone to turn off their bedroom light. <laughs> Let's think about the greenhouse effect. Earth's thick atmosphere is full of greenhouse gases which absorb the sun's heat, radiating a lot of it back at the surface of the Earth. So in essence, global warming is our atmosphere's fault. <laughs> All we need to do to fix it is thin out the atmosphere. So um, more radiation will be lost into space, cooling the planet. Unfortunately, the atmosphere is held pretty firmly onto Earth by our gravitational field. Uh, so how do we go about losing some of our atmosphere? Well, um, all we need to do, really, is eject massive quantities of mass from the Earth and reduce our gravity. <laughs> the atmosphere will thin out and more radiation will be lost into space, cooling the planet. So, um, to do this, uh, first we need to know how much temperature we want to lose. So we'll want to achieve a fall in temperature from our current mean of around 288 Kelvin to an average closer to something like 286. That's actually about a degree lower than the temperature at the time of the Industrial Revolution, just because realistically, we're gonna need that leeway to keep destroying the environment afterwards. <laughs> so uh, we need to know exactly how much mass we have to get rid of to lose just the right amount of insulation from our atmosphere. And I have done the maths. <laughs> so it turns out we need to lose about 5% of our gravity, which equates to around 0.3 septillion kilograms. <laughs> that does sound like a slightly daunting task, I'll admit. Uh, but in reality, I prefer to think of it as another way to improve our planet. So first, we can throw all of our landfill into space. And we produce about 1.3 billion tons of landfill every year. Um, so just 50 years of accumulated waste comes up to 6.5 times 10 to the 13 kilograms. And we're still producing waste at an ever higher rate. That does still give us quite a big window to fill, but I suspect we could also dig up and throw out a few other places that no one will really miss. <laughs> This, I have to apologize to our panel. This is the Jeffrey Mine in Canada. <laughs> it's the largest deposit in the world of asbestos. <laughs> this is a place in Turkmenistan. It's a crater full of methane. It's been on fire for the last 47 years and it's known as the door to hell. This is Washington, D.C. in America. <laughs> it almost goes without saying that if we use our current technology to carry out these launches, we'll produce huge quantities of greenhouse gas. And actually, according to my calculations, which, again, I have done, um, we would produce about 10,000 times more carbon dioxide than the entire mass of the atmosphere. 
and we use up far more fossil fuels than actually exist on the planet. So it's possible that this would um, take away a small amount of the benefit that we achieve. <laughs> so we will actually need to come up with a cleaner technique to get all of this mass off of our planet. And luckily, there's actually a very intuitive way to do this. Uh, we just build a really big tower. <laughs> and I mean really incredibly massive tower. And we can actually make this out of all the waste that we're hoping to get rid of. <laughs> and then from the top of the tower, we just push it up and let it float away into space. This is actually a pretty ideal solution, uh, because not only does it have the potential to limit our energy usage to the chemical stores in our own bodies, but it also generates a lot of employment opportunities. <laughs> Once we've lost all that mass in a proportion of our gravity, we just wait for the atmosphere to thin out. So what happens then? Well, overall, temperature will go down, but I do have to admit that this won't actually be uniform throughout the day. There'll actually be a greater diurnal temperature variation, making us both hot and cold all in one day, a bit like a really prolonged fever or, or an ice cream van on fire. <laughs> It may take a bit of adjusting to, but I am confident that it's one up on our current situation. And if it really turns out to be an issue for our quality of life, we can always take a few neat solutions to get around it. For instance, we could uh, escape from the ex extremes of temperature by moving permanently into underground burrows. <laughs> but honestly, we all agreed earlier that temperature mean was a perfectly good measurement and there's no point in complaining about it now. <laughs> Of course, a reduction in Earth's gravitational field doesn't come without its side effects, but I hope to convince you that these aren't all that serious. Firstly, reduced atmospheric pressure will lower the oxygen concentration in the air. And admittedly, this isn't ideal for anyone suffering from mild respiratory conditions, but for the rest of us, it will essentially just act as compulsory and continual altitude training. <laughs> Next, the reduced pressure will also make genuine high altitudes more dangerous. And to be honest, it's about time Everest became a real challenge again. <laughs> Next, there'll be a small reduction in everyone's weight. Well, this can't be said to exactly cure the obesity epidemic. <laughs> it will certainly make us feel a lot better about the effectiveness of dieting. And finally, the lower gravity will impair our bone strength and our muscle mass, uh, but it will also reduce the force with which we fall over, so <laughs> I don't really foresee it being a major issue. And besides, as new generations are born and develop to be weaker, we'll get to enjoy a brief moment as the strongest humans on the planet. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, first of all, great. <laughs> I'm down with this. Um, so you may be aware of uh, when the Apollo astronauts went to the moon where there's lower gravity and um, they uh, hit some golf balls and they went much further. Have you spoken to the golf clubs at all about how they might need to redesign their courses? That is the number one priority on my list. <laughs> I think it may even need to be explained extended to say bowling and there's a lot of there's a lot of sport opportunities in this plan <laughs> football will be a lot much more, more fun to watch <laughs> so as an economist i'm um <laughs> i'm always looking for for what we call economies of scope where you know you one idea leads to further benefits and the, the thing that immediately struck me on hearing your idea is wouldn't this help to get rid of the moon? <laughs> Dan and I have, can have some very profitable discussions after this. <laughs> Option six. <laughs> Judges look completely satisfied. <laughs> Everyone for Catherine!